We'd like to greet you from Chiang Mai, Thailand. We're excited to share with you some resources about media so that you can see your ministries enhanced, accelerated, and even developed further. You're all doing a wonderful job. We're hearing great reports. We're catching up some of the online um, reporting, but we just want to come alongside and offer some of the resources we found around the world to see if you can see how they can be used in your ministry. So it's a short time. We're just going to give you glimpses into a number of different ministries, but then later we'll give you websites that you can go back and see the different tools that then you can incorporate into your ministry. Some of you might be aware uh, that we've been doing what we call the 2020 vision campaign uh, as actually part of what we're doing out of the IFMLT to share resources and to see new resources developed for unreached peoples. So we're going to start by showing you a little bit about the 2020 vision. The 2020 vision basically is based on this particular uh, goal or this um, mission statement. And that is to see an indigenous evangelistic audiovisual tool for every one of the least evangelized mega peoples. That's unreached peoples or least evangelized peoples of the least reached peoples of the world that have a population of a million or more so that all can clearly see and understand the gospel message and embrace it as their own. So this was the call that we sent out 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago now in Japan uh, at a large conference that we were asked to, to share and roll out this uh, campaign. And we challenged the body of Christ, especially mission agencies that work in the area of media, you can have an impact on the unreached peoples of the world. And uh, we're so excited that many people um, actually came on board with this campaign. We had about, we have right now about 55 different mission agencies that are all working together with us to see indigenous gospel media made for each of the least evangelized mega peoples. And uh, they asked us to facilitate this campaign. And so we did websites. This particular uh, website here is our, is our main website for distributing our media in digitube.tv. And uh, it has on it many different resources. And this is not just uh, Creative International's uh, evangelist films, but all the films that all the different member organizations have put together as a part of this campaign. So we have now over 700 gospel films. We have the audio Bible in 1,300 different languages. We're getting about 16,000 visits to the website per month, tens of thousands download. At last uh, look, last statistics, uh, we have about one terabyte of media that's being downloaded every month. So we're pretty excited that people are using that. Also, to make it easier for people to get a hold of these resources, we started our own app. We created our own app. And you can find that at createapp.mobi. You can download it for free on either you, um, uh, the Android, uh, Google Play, or uh, iTunes, whichever uh, mobile device you happen to be using. And this is what it looks like when you come into it. You're able to actually see on the left-hand side, you can do a search, type in a language or a people group name, and the film will films will come up for that language group. And you'll see a little bit in the center there of the film and uh, an explanation of it. You can play it there and watch it uh, for free, of course. Everything's for free. Or you can download it right to your device as well. So we're pretty excited about these resources and how they're being used. Also, you might be aware that there's a new device out, a new Wi-Fi device called the Lightstream Pocket. Uh, on one charge, it'll last for 10 hours. You can put all your media, any of the media on our website, you can put on it, it's made for it. And once you turn it on, you can broadcast the signal to about 100 meters in every direction. Any device that has Wi-Fi can link to it and actually watch the gospel films right there. And because you're not linked to the internet, it's a standalone device, there's no way to track it. So you can use it anywhere and no one knows where the signal is coming from. So we're committed to using the best technology that's out there and getting that out to reach unreached peoples. 
So how do we get our information today? This is a little bit of a funny picture, but it shows you the contrast of how we got how we got information, our information, and how we get our information today. You can see at the top, uh, you know, people are using their mobile devices. This is what's happening. This is the revolution that's happening all over the world. And prior to this time, you know, media maybe was a specialization. It was something only for people who had money, the wealthy, uh, those who were trained specially. But now, actually, all of us can be media producers. And we take our media with us, don't we? Everywhere we go, we, we have our media with us. Oftentimes, we'll tell people, are you using your mobile device for evangelism? And they'll say, oh, not really. And then we'll ask them, oh, well, do you listen to music or watch movies on it? Oh, yeah, every day. Well, then we say, well, why, why aren't you sharing the gospel with it? Oh, yeah, I guess I should. And, and these are the latest statistics on the Internet. We've got 7.75 billion people in the world. Over 5 billion of those people have mobile devices. This is, this is what we're talking about. This is the world we live in today. Not tomorrow, not in 10 years, but today. And you, you, know, you might not have a camera or expensive equipment, but guess what you do have in your pocket? You have a mobile phone. And this is what we're excited about seeing used and developed. Uh, almost oh, four and a half, almost five billion people on the internet, using the internet. And those that are using the internet, look, 50% or more of them are actually using social media. And this is very, very key to what we're gonna be talking about and different strategies that we can begin to adopt. YouTube is an amazing social media tool. Many of us watch YouTube movies and we probably even have a YouTube account. And you'd be surprised how many people have a YouTube account. We'll look at the stats coming up. But we started to get excited about this several years ago when we realized, hey, we can actually reach out to unreached peoples putting our gospel films on YouTube. And we started to do that, and we've been doing that for a while, and, and, and reaching tens of thousands of people. And so that's pretty exciting to us. Uh, but we realized, wow, look how many people are actually on YouTube. Every month, there's 2 billion users every month on, on YouTube. And if you look at the, the, the center one, I want you to focus on that. Every day, people are watching 1 billion hours of YouTube movies every day. This is incredible. And the growth of this is phenomenal. And so anybody who's serious about using the Internet uh, for, for the gospel needs to be using YouTube. We know that for sure. So we have started to see something new, a new phenomena that we hadn't seen before. And that is a number of our indigenous workers, the folks that partnered with us on these films, have taken the film and put them up on their own YouTube account, which is exciting. But we began to notice, oh my gosh, they're getting 10 times the views that we're getting on our websites, uh, on our uh, YouTube account when we put the films up. We began to realize what's happening is the algorithms, these little programs, these little you know, uh, artificial intelligent bots that uh, YouTube has created, Google has created, to actually drive traffic to the films. They're looking for people who speak the language, who live in that area, where that film was produced or where that language group is. And then they prioritize the driving of the traffic to that account. And uh, so we began to see this is the reason why they're getting huge numbers. In fact, one that uh, you will be showing you coming up, uh, which is very exciting about the Banjara people in India, we noticed when we first uh, saw them, as you can see down in the lower left hand or right hand side here, uh, he had almost 800,000 views. And we thought, oh my goodness, this is, this is amazing. I think we've really stumbled on something. And so what we're starting to do now is we're going to make a specific effort 
to every time we're doing a new gospel film, we have those folks that we're working with on the field from that people group put the film up on their YouTube account. And we know we're going to see exponential growth of, of views. So that's pretty exciting, isn't it? And um, all of us have a part to play in this. You might not see yourself as a media person or a media producer, but guess what? If you've got one of these in your hand, you can be very easily. And so that's what is important that we have on-demand access to content anytime, anywhere, on any digital device. So when you are next to a person at a bus station or in, in the fields or in the coffee shops, you can say, hey, here's a two-minute video. Here's a short video that I can share the gospel with and I can bring people to Christ through short things. But then we also want to engage with them and have interactive user feedback so that it's not just pushing the media, but there's a push and pull and engagement with our audience. Actually, our folks here at Create uh, in Thailand are working together with another ministry on films where you can actually interact with the film and you can change the outcome of certain scenes. So that's, that's like high engagement interactivity. And um, during our last time in South Africa, we went around and asked the different regional leaders, what can we as a contextual resource group help you with? And they mentioned t for t training. So we did a pilot project with the oral DTS in Indonesia. And you can see they're using um, these cards and they said it was effective to use these cards in sharing the t for t principles. And then also you can put it on your mobile device. And so you don't have to uh, worry that, oh, I didn't bring my cards. I can always have it on my phone and you can use it to easily go through the different principles. So we did it in Indonesian and Hindi and different languages for Bamari's group in South Asia. So this is just the start. It was a pilot project, but I think that more and more we're going to use different graphics and visuals to help us in our communication of the T for T principles. And the exciting thing about media is that today it is reproducible. So as church planters, we're always concerned about this. You know, is what we're using reproducible? And years ago, yes, media couldn't really be reproduced by the average person. But today people are doing it. They're already doing it. And uh, a, an image like this, that you could have all these different cards that you can flip through as we did here, you can Bluetooth that to your friend, someone you're sharing about Jesus for the first time, they've never heard of Jesus, and you can Bluetooth the whole thing and say, okay, we're going to talk about these next five cards next time I meet with you. So just think of how, how exciting this can be using new media and using the mobile devices that we have. And there's so many ways, social media, line, so many different forms that we can share. So we're just going to share one little um, ministry that could take you a week to understand fully, but some of our friends there uh, can share with you more. So it's called Media to Disciple Making Movements. And so this is just the pathway that they share how first you just need to set your vision and your goal. You train people in DMM. You pray a lot, and then you look at the different strategies and paths. You figure out who's the audience you're trying to reach, your persona. Then you come alongside and ask marketers to help you develop targeted ads and content. Then you evaluate, did it meet my audience? And then eventually you'll see that this really sparked an interest through this uh, social media to um, share a, a funnel that they also have in their ministry of um, how you have a wide group of, of people that you're uh, doing media that would entice them to want to come to your site. So it's Facebook, Google ads. And then you also look at the different aspects of, of media that um, you can share with them that is in their language and their adapted to their people group. And then as people are interested, then you have online correspondence and you have local believers interacting with the people that online are saying, hey, I'm, I'm interested to know more. And so then, then you have a tracking device where you have the seekers organized and you check and recall previous conversations and check out their spiritual 
progress. And then you have dispatching and following up and that you have disciple makers follow up with them. So you can see by this funnel, everyone's needed. We need the media people to do really great ads and, and uh, Facebook and things that would draw people in. But then we need the guys on the ground who would follow people up. And then we're gonna see a whole coalition, more and more contacts coming through it that you can then follow up. And, and then eventually you wanna meet face to face. And then the church is formed and then there's multiplication. So it's exciting. Uh, and, the, and there's some examples that we're gonna show that how this is working. But you can see there's different roles that are needed. You have the visionary leader that keeps the uh, team's vision clear. And then the, those that develop the content, the responder, the multiplier, and the dispatcher. And so all of these are needed. So we wanna do some pilot projects. We're talking to some people in Indonesia and Peace is there that he's gonna share more with you about this. But this is something we wanna just propose to you. And some of you might already be involved in this. We know some people when we were in the Middle East said, oh, I'm a dispatcher. So you're aware of this, but as DMM people, we should be aware of that this media to DMM is a, is a ministry that we should know more about. So you can look at Kingdom, Dot training for more information about this ministry. The exciting thing too about this this strategy is that it has at as its goal DMM disciple making movements. So it's starting with social media, bringing in traditional media and all these elements, but focus specifically on the field. The strategy is actually a field driven and field created strategy by field workers who happened to have worked in a previous uh, occupation with uh, Facebook and Google. So they had the skills already and began to get revelation from the Lord how they could put this together and combine it with their love and their passion for DMF. So we want to show you just a, a little bit of a, a, a case study just to sort of whet your appetite on what could be possible. Uh, I'm not allowed to, to say the exact country, but this was a, done in a country in North Africa. Some friends of ours, uh, and actually TWR Motion, uh, helped and partnered with them a lot to help develop an animation piece. So they made a Creation to Christ simple uh, motion graphics, we call it, animation piece, designed for the, the people group uh, that they were reaching out to. 20 episodes, so they would release an episode every week or so, and then open it up for discussion and chat on Facebook, and then they would um, follow up people and have people uh, asking further questions of them. So basically, they started with a familiar looking, um, uh, you know, visuals and things like that, animals, all this. Culture was familiar. They made sure they were following cultural norms and these were the results that came uh, of that campaign just after 10 weeks of this campaign they had over 70,000 facebook responses so responses to their facebook ads 686 or so uh, facebook inquiries people would ask them more write them and ask them for more information 556 agreed that they would meet face to face to talk more about the gospel on the field, right? In coffee shops and things. 350 of them actually did meet face to face with the team that was there, a uh, team members that was there. 118 came to Christ. This is after just a three month campaign, okay? 118 came to Christ. Uh, 48 got baptized not long afterwards, and they started seven new house churches from this. This was so incredible. After three months, it was, I can tell you, the news of this spread through all the ministries working in the Middle East. They wanted to know because many of them had been working 20 years, 40 years in the region, even doing media, pushing media out, but they never knew whether or not they were having an effect because they didn't have a, a direct contact with the field and the people on the field. This is the genius about this particular method. 
This is another example of the method being used. Okay, some friends of ours did uh, put together an animation. Carol was talking about just, you know, find, discover your persona. They discovered four personas, four types of people that they wanted to reach out, that their, their research showed them. These were people that were questioning, but from different perspectives. So they created an animation of four friends, four buddies, right? Uh, and they each were one of those personas, and they interacted in this animation. It's an eight-part uh, animation. And this is it in Arabic. And uh, we'll just play a little bit of it, just for a, a bit. طيب يا شباب هلا رح نقرأ كلمة الله مع بعض من وين رح نبلش أستاذ شو رأيكم بمراجعة سريعة للأحرف الأبجدية مشان حمودة ولا يهم حمودة هالقصة رح تكون أقصر وممتعة أكثر من يلي بتحطن على سناب شات يا أخي أنا مو فاهم سناب شات كله صور لحمودة لحاله عليها نفس الكتابة لكل بنت مو ناقصني غيري يعني ما حدا رح تفرق معه هدول الصور طيب خلينا هلا نترك كلمات حمودة العميقة ونشوف الكلمات اللي عن جد عميقة شباب نزلتوا تطبيق الانجيل على موبايلاتكم؟ ايه ايه نزلناه واصدار الشريف مثل ما حكي. طيب وبما انه شفنا البدايه المثاليه اللي خلقها الله. Okay, so they then go on to share about the, the creation to Christ uh, story with one another. You can see they were bluetoothing uh, the, the Bible to each other. This was later on in the process of them getting to know uh, Christ together uh, as friends. So this was done and put out as a campaign. They also used what we call chat bots, which are actually, if you know anything about chat bots, you're using them possibly every day. When you call up Amazon or someplace to check on your order, probably you're getting a, a bot, a robot message instead of an actual real person. Uh, so these are so, now with AI, they're so highly advanced we can actually use these to share the gospel and get pe take people through a process, whether or not they're really interested or they're just playing around or, or looking for a girlfriend or whatever, a boyfriend, uh, or if they're really serious about Jesus. So they used this um, animation that they had produced along with the chat bots. They reached 80, over 87,000 people on their Facebook ads, over 1,000 inquired uh, more about uh, Jesus, uh, 124 met face to face, 12 of those became believers. Now these don't sound like big numbers maybe to you, uh, but for ministry in the Middle East, these are numbers that people don't get in a year. In fact, sometimes it's 10 years to see these, this number of people come to Christ. And they got them actually doing uh, DBS in groups. So, and this is how much it cost, only a little over a couple hundred dollars they paid for this campaign. So it's incredible, and they're following up because they got subscribers and they're doing continued um, uh, campaigns after this. And so also we want to share that media can spark movements. We know when we look at movements, there's so many factors involved. There's prayer, there's people on the ground, there's God's timing, so many aspects. So we're not saying media is the only one, but we can see how it can help. A media piece that's made by and for the people, that it's indigenous, it's cultural, that it can really excite them to say the gospel can be within my community and I can live out my faith within my community. And so we're just going to share with you a case study of one group that this has come about. About 15 years ago, Creator International did a gospel film for the Banjara people, which is, um, their language is Lombardi, you might have heard of that name as well. Uh, but they're an unreached people group in India of about 60 million, so quite a large group. And they are, can be found all over India, but especially uh, in, in the central area, central and northern area. Uh, and we were asked to come. We did a gospel film. This is an old picture of our, our team there. And uh, you can't see me there, but I had a little more hair if you would see me. Uh, but so we did this film. Uh, it was called Transformations, and uh, uh, about, uh, well, immediately after we produced the film, the people started using uh, this film to share the gospel with their own people, 
And uh, we were actually asked about five years later, five years after we produced the film, they said, look, we're going to have a big celebration time where we're gonna show the film and we would really love it if you guys could be there. And so we happened to be in India around the same time. So we said, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come. And so um, we actually uh, came in a taxi and we were coming over a dirt hill. This was down in Hyderabad, India. And we came over a dirt hill down into the valley where they were actually gonna have their gathering. And we were so surprised that we saw 12,000 Banjara that were gathered there. It was a huge gathering. And we got to see some of the actors and get our pictures taken. Of course, they wanted their pictures taken with us. We've got to share uh, and give them uh, some new devices, new projectors and, and uh, master copies to be able to use in their work. Because they, what they did is they immediately took the film and they started using it right after we had sent it to, to them. And we, we sat down with their church planting uh, leaders and said, well, how do you use it? They said, well, we go into a village, we show the film, people get saved, and we put them into uh, uh, groups, uh, home church groups, and then we go on to the next village and do the same thing. And we've been doing that for five years. And so uh, they were celebrating uh, the fruitfulness of that whole time. And uh, we, as we began to sit with them and ask them, well, how's it going? How, what's the response to the film? They told us, well, we now have about 10,000 Banjaras that have gotten saved after seeing the film. And we've started about 500 new churches in just the past five years. And we were so excited to hear this. We, Carol and I thought, oh, well, the Lord can take us to heaven right now. This is, this is wonderful. This is what we've dreamed about. Uh, uh, happening. And uh, so it's not the film by itself, but it's the film together with DMM. And that combination, using that, it's, it, you get the dynamic of media uh, multiplying, and, and it's, it's just exciting. And so we were so happy to hear about this. And uh, you, you probably um, remember when I was talking about YouTube, and we were actually, because we noticed that all these people, uh, the indigenous partners, uh, were actually putting it on their websites or on their uh, YouTube account and getting lots of uh, views, we thought, okay, let's keep looking. Well, we found another brother who had put the Banjara film up on his, and he now has 900,000 views. When we saw this, we, we were just completely surprised. We didn't know what to say or think. And I thought to myself, well, I knew that there was 10,000 Banjaras a few years ago, or, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, and, but I've not heard anything from them since. We've lost track. Uh, we've lost contact with the people who we were working with in this movement. And so I thought, I'm going to contact, try to contact them again to find out what's going on. And so I did. And they immediately, within a couple of days, wrote back, oh, brother, it's so good to connect with you. We lost your email. We couldn't contact you. Yes, we would be happy to tell you the news about uh, the Banjara coming to Jesus. And we actually, I'll send you an, a more detailed report later, but I'll first start by sending you this graphic that we just made on the work. And so he sent this graphic to us. And he said, oh, but brother, it's not 10,000 Banjaras that have come to Christ. It's 2 million. 2 million. And I just did what I'm doing now. And that's starting to weep. Uh, I couldn't believe it. I was so overjoyed. Carol and I were just, wow. We just praised the Lord for days after first hearing this, that 2 million Banjaras had come to Christ. And we said, are you still using the film? And they said, oh, yes, brother, we still use it the same way. We're just, you know, that's the way we train our people. <laughs> so we thought this is so exciting. And we had heard because the Banjara are a gypsy people in India, they travel all over. The, the workers working with them said probably they'll begin to reach other people groups as well. Well, you can see at the bottom here, it says they're now working with 200 different unreached people groups in India. So this large unreached people group has seen a tremendous 
uh, movement to Christ. And it's actually, now they don't just have 10,000 saved, they got 10,000 actual church planting workers, as you can see, working in 23 states uh, uh, in, in India with over 200 different people groups. So this was so exciting, and we wanted to be able to share this with you, not to glorify us, but to glorify God, and to also show you a real life example of what we're seeing in terms of the effect of media when we combine it with DMM. And so imagine all those workers going out, the, they're going out to 200 different groups, and yet they could have an indigenous gospel presentation on their phone. And this was the cry, we were just even at a recent movement leaders meeting, and Cindy and Reg were there, and, and we thought, how can we serve you guys? And they said, can you help us with media? Because our workers can't go to every place and we don't want West, too many Westerners coming on, but you could help us do media. And so we want to address the needs of field workers evangelizing and discipling thousands of workers. We need to use the power and reproducibility. So anyone with can record a short video testimony or teaching on their smartphone and then distribute it to others. And so we want to see the gospel on every screen. And that when you see people looking at uh, their subway, being in the subway, looking at their uh, phones, wow, wouldn't it be great to sh see the gospel message being shown on every screen? And so that's really our heart, that we would see a whole army of indigenous film producers across all sections of the unreached utilize this technology it's not just for media professionals or those that can afford a media gear now everyone has the ability to use their own personal mobile phones to be a media evangelist and trainer so we we're seeing this and so we want to respond to this by starting smartphone filmmaking seminars and so in 2021 uh, 2021 we want to launch these five-day seminars and you can tack it on to a multipliers gathering or a seminar and we could come in and our teams can train your trainers of how they can do record testimonies and short dramas and different um, different aspects of sharing the gospel and then they can then train their uh, people so we want to see an army of people not just a few but every indigenous church planter would know how to use their smartphone uh, for evangelism and training. So we're really excited because the Lord really showed us one day when we were praying recently about this, and uh, the Lord was challenging us about this whole idea of everyone, of, of believers from all different unreached people groups being equipped to be able to use um, they're, you know, what they have, that they don't have to go out and get expensive equipment and all this. And the Lord really reminded us of the story of Moses, where Moses said, I can't do this. I'm not equipped. And God said, what's that in your hand? And then God told me, put your hand on your pocket. What's that in your hand? And that was a mobile phone. And so I immediately went out and got myself a $70 Android phone which I'm now holding in my hands. This has now become my mobile uh, uh, film production studio and camera and everything right here. And you can get free software that helps you to, to maximize the capability of the camera in it, free software that you can edit right on it, and you can uh, produce really nice, short, little, uh, impactful gospel videos that can be used on social media or Bluetooth to your friends and, and used in the process of DMM. So that's something we're really excited about. And this visual that we, this is a banner that we had produced. And we, we did it specifically this way because this is the unreached peoples. We believe unreached peoples are going to be the believers from unreached people groups are the ones that are going to bring a huge harvest in from the unreached world. All these languages, all these peoples are going to be running into heaven. We're going to meet them. As it says in Revelation 7, 9, some from every tongue, tribe, and nation standing before the Lord. And it's, it's going to be 
this uh, huge army of media producers that God raises up amongst these people to reach their own people, but also the other unreached peoples that they have natural networks and relationships with. We all know that the people we're working with, most of them speak multiple languages, maybe three or four or five different languages. They could be produ producing these short little clips and testimonies uh, that could be used to reach out to all these peoples, and they could exponentially multiply what has been done. And so we'll come back on and say thank you for uh, listening to us, and we'll show you our different tools that we have here, the phones and uh, our different aspects. So My $70 Android phone for media. Mm -hmm. And that we want to be a resource uh, to you with our Create uh, International people, but also our, our contextual resources, and we're part of the Vision 59 media resources. So we're passionate for what you're doing and the new wineskins God's going to release to all of us, and we want to see you on the field and keep in touch of how we can help you be more effective with media resources on the field. Yeah, bless you.